Hey what's going on guys, Tursky here and welcome back to another Minecraft mining tutorial for version 1.15. In this tutorial we are going to be going over how you can create yourself some particles. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to want is our particle in it. So let's create that. In here we're going to want the public static final deferred registry. And this will be off of particle type uh, and we're going to call this particle types and this is just going to be equal to a new deferred register and this will take in forge registries dot particle types and our mod id which is tutorial mod mod id next we need to go ahead and create the uh, public static final registry object and this is off particle type and that will be off of our colored particle data so uh, I don't know if I explained this already, but the particles I'm going to be creating are basically grayscale ones and you color them when you spawn them. So you choose the color when you spawn it. Uh, so that's the kind of particles I'm going to be creating today. Um, I will have a future tutorial on uh, just ones that are already colored and you just spawn those and you don't have to worry about making the color yourselves. Um, but this is just a bit easier. So we'll be doing that to uh, first. Um, but let's call this variable uh, colored particle. And obviously that's going to be equal to uh, particle types dot register. First, this obviously takes in the registry name, which is going to be uh, colored underscore particle. And then it takes in a supplier of a new particle type. First is a boolean for when whether it always shows. Um, so I'm going to set that to false. Um, and then it is the deserializer, which we haven't created yet, but that is just going to be our uh, colored particle data dot deserializer. And if you just go ahead and import registry object and particle type, we should fix some of those errors. Um, and now we just need to do one more thing. Well, two more things. First, we need to create this class. We need to make this class an event bus. So uh, that is an at mod event bus. This will obviously first take in our mod ID. Then it will take in the bus, which is the bus.mod. And then we need to specify that it is client size, so we can do value equals dist.client and just import uh, bus mod and dist. Now we don't need it's not a necessity that we uh, tell it that it's client side, um, but it just helps it uh, solves any uh, future problems that we could have. Um, but now we need to actually register the particle factory so this will be a method uh, which is a public static void register particle factory and this will have the annotation at subscribe event this will take in the particle factory register event and we'll call that event in here we're going to do minecraft dot get instance dot particles dot register factory First will be our particle type, so particle in it dot colored particle dot get, and then it will be the particle factory, which is just colored particle dot factory colon colon new. Okay, and it will want us to suppress this, so we can have a suppress warnings of resource. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and create this colored particle class. So I'm going to do that in my particles package. This class is going to extend sprite textured particle. First we are going to create three variables um, and they will be private doubles and that will be for pos x, pos y and pos z. Then we need to go ahead and create the constructor which we should be able to get from up here. Okay and we just need to make sure this is public not protected and get rid of this comment. Now we can go ahead and rename these so for the first one is world. The second one is the X chord in, third one is the Y chord in, the fourth one is the Z chord in, the fifth one is the X speed, the sixth one is the uh, Y speed, and the seventh one is the Z speed. And so then we need to go ahead and add two more, so that will be the data um, and the sprite. So that will be a 
colored particle data and we'll call that data and it will be an eye animated sprite and we'll call that sprite next we just need to change these supers to what we have up here so i'm just going to go ahead and do that then we need to set a few a few variables so first we can do this dot motion x and we can set that to x speed in and this dot motion y is equal y speed in and then this dot motion z is equal z speed in so then we're going to do uh this dot pos x is equal to the x chord in and we're going to also do that for y and z and then we can do uh, the particle scale so this is basically a random value so we can assign that to uh, 0.1 f and then we can multiply that by this dot rand dot next float and then we can multiply that by 0.2 f and we can just add 0.5 now i have simply just got that from vanilla so i am actually going to change it again a bit and i'm going to change this to plus 1.2 f uh, to make it in fact no plus 1.7 f to make it a bit bigger and easier to see um, you can obviously set this to whatever you want this just adds uh, some randomness to it uh, but obviously you can go ahead and do that if you wish and then we need to set the particle red, particle green, and the particle blue. Now this is mostly just a bunch of random values to make it slightly different each time. So I am just going to uh, paste this in. And we also need this float f variable, which we are multiplying by. And then we need to set the max age so that there is some randomness to how long the particle lives for. We just need to cast an int to math.random times 10.0d. And then I'm going to add 40 onto the end of that to make it at least 40. Okay, so that is it for the constructor. Next is the tick method. So basically what it does while the particle is alive, uh, how it moves around and all of that. And here is basically just a bunch of random maths for how you want it to move around um, so you can basically go ahead and implement that yourself uh, but there are a few things that you do need so you need to set the previous pos to the current pos and then we need to make an if statement to check if this dot age incremented is greater than or equal to this dot max age if it is then we want to set it to expired and we do that by this dot set expired then we need to override the method get render type and in here you basically just return the particle render type that you want so i'm going to be returning particle sheet sheet opaque then we need to go ahead and create the factory class um, which is only in the client side and we can make sure it's only client side by doing uh, the annotation at only in and that will take in the dist which is dist.client this class needs to be a public static class and we will call that factory and this is going to implement iParticleFactory and this will take in our colored particle data in here we first need to create a variable for the i animated sprite and we're going to call that uh, sprite set then we need the constructor which goes ahead and takes in this sprite set and then we just need to go ahead and initialize that then we need to override the method make particle and in here we just basically create the particle um, so we can create a new instance of our colored particle then we need to uh, tell it to select the sprite randomly out of our sprite set and we do this by doing particle dot select sprite randomly and that takes in the sprite set and we just return the particle now that we have done that we can go ahead and create this uh, colored particle data class so this will be a public static class colored particle data and this implements i particle data in here we first want to create the deserializer so that is a public static final i particle data dot deserializer and that will take in our colored particle data it's going to be equal to a new i particle data dot deserializer of our colored particle data in the deserialize method we basically need to go ahead and uh, get the uh, red green blue and alpha from uh, what we put in 
So we do that by doing reader.expect and we just expect a blank char. And then we can create a float red is equal to a float of reader.read double. And then we are going to do this for uh, green, blue, and alpha. And then after that, we just return a new colors particle data taking in our red, green, blue, and alpha. Then for the read method, we can just return a new colored particle data, and it's just the buffer reading the four floats. Then we can come out of this deserializer and create three private final floats, and that will be red, green, blue, and alpha. Then we just create the constructor, and this takes the red, green, blue, and alpha in. Then we just need to go ahead and initialize the red, green, and blue. However, the alpha is slightly different, so that will be uh, mathhelper.clamp, and that first clamps the alpha, and then it's the minimum that it clamps from, so that will be 0.01f, and the maximum is 4.0f. Then we need the write method. In here, we just do buffer.write float, and then it will be this.red, and you do that for green, blue, and alpha. And we override the method get parameters. In here we return string.format. First is locale.root. And then it is the string that we are formatting. So first will be uh, percentage %s, which is the uh, particle type. Then it is percentage %2f. And then it is percentage %2f again. And then it is percentage 0.2f again and then it is percentage 0.2f again the first one we want to assign to registry dot particle type dot get key and so that takes in this dot get type then it is this dot red this dot green this dot blue and this dot alpha and we can just add a suppress warnings off deprecation on that then we can go ahead and override the method get type in which we just return our particle in it dot colored particle dot get then we can override the method get red get green and get blue and get alpha in which these methods we just return this dot red this dot green this dot blue and this dot alpha you do however need to make sure these have the at only and this dot client annotation as we don't want those to be uh, got on the server and that is it for this class. Um, we just need to go back into our particle unit to, to import this class and then give that a save and that will fix our error that we had here. And that is it for that. Obviously we need to know, now go ahead and register this. So we go into our main class and before everything we go ahead and do particle init. Um, dot particle types dot register the mod event bus now that we have done that i'm going to show you what you need to do to go ahead and uh, spawn this particle in your world so i am going to spawn it in our speckle block um, i've commented out this lightning thing because it's quite hard to see with the lightning showing up as well and in here we just do world add particle this, this takes in the particle data which is a new colored particle dot colored particle data and this just takes in the color that you want. So I want it to be completely green. So I'm going to do 0, 1, 0, and 1. So obviously this is red, green, blue, alpha. Then it is the positions. So that is just going to be pos.get x plus 0 0.5, pos.get y plus 0 0.5, and pos.get z plus 0 0.5. We are adding 0 0.5 so it is in the center of the block and it just makes it a bit easier to see the particle when we do that. And here you can see we have the speed which I'm just going to set to 0 for all of them uh, just so it doesn't have any weird motion. Okay so now we need to go ahead into our assets and in the we need to create a new package called particles. In here we're going to create a new uh, file and we're going to call this colored particle.json. That name should need to be the same name that you put as your registry name and particle in it. In here we first want the textures which is an, an array and then we want the different textures that you can have for your particle. So I'm just going to have uh, three textures so I'm going to have colored 0, colored 1 and colored 2. So this will just be tutorial mod and then it will be the name of your texture 
as it already knows where the texture is it just needs to know the name of it and i am now going to just copy this and paste it twice as i have three different textures and i'm going to change that to one and two now if you go into your textures package you need to create a new package called particle and this is where you'll put your particle textures these need to be 16 by 16 as normal um, but you need to make sure they are grayscale if you are following this tutorial now that you have done that you can go ahead and run the game and it should work okay so guys i did actually forget this else statement in here which is actually what does the motion um, that is something i totally forgot about um, so you just need to go ahead and do that um, it's basically just a math load of math to get it moving around uh, you can look at vanilla particles if you want to see how it's done for example uh, drip particle if you look in here you can see how it just uh, does does some maths here to move it down um, you can look at loads of vanilla particles like firework particle okay so guys I am now in the game um, when I click it you can see my particle comes up uh, it's, it's a bit glitchy, I did the motion slightly wrong I think um, but as you can see it's bright green because we set it to no blue, no red, full alpha and full green uh, if you look very closely it's different every time um, it's not the same because we have the uh, animated sprite which selects a random one um, so yeah um, as I said, I will be doing a tutorial on uh, ones that are already coloured and not grayscale in the future, but I'm sure you can figure that out yourself anyways. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, if you guys enjoy this tutorial, please do be sure to smash your face into that like button and subscribe. If you really enjoyed, please do be sure to share it. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.